Hi everyone. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Miss Liz and I am the toddler class coordinator at Orangeville Baptist Church. And with the corona shutdown right now, we are obviously not able to meet together in person. So for adults, we have the live stream service, but our toddlers don't have anything. So I thought it would be nice to record some videos of me just reading some Bible stories and have some toddler craft and activity ideas to go with it that you guys can do at home to give the toddler something to do every week and hopefully help keep us all engaged with each other and connected while we're not able to meet together. So for our videos, I'm planning on using this book called Play Through the Bible that you can buy on Amazon as my guide and I'll be reading the Bible stories through the Jesus Storybook Bible. And so this week, I thought I would do the story of Noah and Noah's Ark from the Old Testament, which that would be Genesis 6 through 9. And I'm just going to jump right in and get started because I know we're working with shorter attention spans. So I will get started. Time passed and many people filled the earth. Everyone everywhere had forgotten about God and were only doing bad things all the time. God's heart was filled with pain when he saw what had happened to the world he loved. Everywhere was disease and death and destruction, all the things God hates most. Now Noah was God's friend. Noah listened to God. He talked to God. He just loved being with God, like you do with your best friend. Noah, God said, things have gone wrong. People have filled my world with hate instead of love. They are destroying themselves and each other in my world. I must stop them. First, we'll build an ark. Do you know how to build an ark? Neither did Noah. Luckily, God knew, and he would show him how. Here Noah's got his plans and his material, and he's ready to start building. A storm is coming, God told Noah, but I will rescue you. I promise. I'll send the animals to you, ones that creep and crawl and slither and slime and gallop and hop and bound and climb. And don't forget to pack everyone's food. The storm was going to wash away all the hate and sadness and everything that had gone wrong and make the world clean again. God had thought up a way to keep Noah safe, but Noah would have to trust God and do exactly what God told him. So Noah built an ark, which is short for a very large boat. Noah's neighbors came out to watch and point and laugh because they didn't believe Noah about the boat or the storm or needing to be rescued. And Noah must have looked rather silly. His boat was in the desert. The desert was nowhere near the sea, and there wasn't even a cloud in the sky. Why would anyone need an umbrella, let alone a boat? See, they're all pointing and laughing at Noah. But Noah didn't mind so much what other people thought. He minded what God thought, so he just did what God told him to do. When the ark was ready, God said, all aboard, and Noah's family and all the animals climbed inside. Then God shut the door. All those animals crammed in the boat. And it started raining for minutes. It joined into hours. It joined into days. It joined into weeks and weeks. And the rain turned into puddles. It turned into rivers. It turned into lakes that turned into a flood that covered the whole world. Their boat had once seemed so big, suddenly seemed very small. But in the middle of the huge storm, in the crashing waves, in all the thunder and the lightning, through it all, God was with them. And God kept them safe for 40 long days and 40 long nights. Finally, the rain stopped. The sun came out and Noah threw open all the windows. Hooray, everyone shouted. Noah sent his dove out to explore, and it wasn't long before she brought him back a fresh olive leaf. Everyone knew exactly what that meant. She had found a tree in land. The water was going down. Little tiny boat on some big waves. At last, the boat landed quite suddenly on top of a great mountain. As soon as it was safe, God said, out you come. And so they did, everyone skipping and dancing onto dry land. The first thing Noah did was thank God for rescuing them, just as he had promised. And the first thing God did was make another promise. I won't ever destroy the world again. And like a warrior who puts away his bow and arrow at the end of a great battle, 
God said, see, I've hung up my bow in the clouds. And there in the clouds, just where the storm meets the sun, was a beautiful bow made of light, a rainbow. It was a new beginning in God's world. It wasn't long before everything went wrong again, but God wasn't surprised. He knew this would happen. That's why, before the beginning of time, he had another plan, a better plan. A plan not to destroy the world, but to rescue it. A plan to one day send his own son, the rescuer. And there's their boat up on the mountain, and God's promise, the rainbow. And so with Noah, in the story of Noah, there's two main points that we really need to remember. The first one is that God, ob Noah obeyed God. Even though no one else did, he obeyed God. But that's not the biggest point. The hero of the story isn't Noah. The hero of the story is God. Because God is the one who saved Noah, and he kept his promise. Just like he's kept all of his other promises, and he will continue to keep all of his promises. And if you have some older kids and you want to have a memory verse to go along with this story, you can do Genesis 6, 22, which is Noah did everything just as God commanded him. That's Genesis 6, 22. And so for some activities to help us remember the ark and what God did, you can get a tote and you can fill it up with all your little animal toys. You probably have a bunch at home. I know I do. And you put your tote in some water in a sink or the bathtub or a water table and watch how it floats and watch the waves and remember how Noah built the ark and God kept them safe in their boat. Another way to remember in a similar way is you get a big laundry basket and fill it up with all your stuffed animals and you can sit in it on the floor and pretend it's your boat, pretend you're Noah and you're waiting for God to let you off the boat. And then you have to have a snack. So what better snack to have when you're talking about animals than animal crackers? So I hope you enjoyed this little video. Feel free to watch it again. If you missed something, feel free to share it with your friends. And if you do any of the activities, please take pictures and post them in the comments so that we can see that you are what you're doing at home and that you're enjoying these. If you have a Bible story request, feel free to comment and let me know and I will see what I can do. So please stay safe. Have a good week. Bye.